And actually, I kind of zoom out a little bit. Okay, so. Um, here's what the setup. What we have currently is we have a oscilloscope. Actually, let me just go back to this. So we have this motor here powered. We have our slip ring in between. And we have another slip ring on the top to bottom. So we can actually check to make sure that the signals between this slip ring are consistent. And they stay, uh, basically they don't, uh, there's no uh, disconnects happening. You have like what, 17, like 12 connections or eight connections, something like that, on the, uh, on the eight brushes, something like that? Do you remember? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. We have a lot of brushes, so it should stay uh, connected. So we have a whole bunch of resistors pulling the lines on this bottom side to ground. Uh, we are powering this whole thing with five volts across these two rails. And what we're looking for is on this side, we're actually pulling these up directly up to five volts. So if there's any disconnect between here, we should see these guys fall to ground on the oscilloscope. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple examples. We actually went through all of this already. Uh, we're just gonna show a couple of these to show that nothing's happening here. So the blue line represents one of the other signals from either side of the slip ring, of the pancake slip ring. This is to ensure that we don't have any crosstalk. Whereas uh, this pink line here, this is actually connected to the source itself. If you ever see the yellow line, which is the pink connection here, fall to ground, we know that we have disconnect. If we ever see the blue line go high or spike up a little bit, that means that we connected between two traces. That's what we want to prevent, okay? So let me I'll hold that guy and reset, apply the power. And right now we are connected to the black line, connected to black line, cool. And then this guy is connected up to one of the line right next to it on the slip ring, so. <clears throat> now you'll see some fuzziness here. I'm gonna explain that. So this fuzziness is actually interference from the servo itself. It has nothing to do with uh, our slip ring in the middle. The reason why you know this is because at the last command we put in is to turn off the motor. When you turn on the motor, you'll see the interference start. There's no delay between you turning on the motor and actually moving it. Um, but I have seen in, in prior experience that just turning on the motor will cause interference just from the motor uh, servo circuitry trying to control the windings. So as you can see, there were no weird spikes. There's a bit of a spike here, but I think that's from the thing stopping abruptly. So that looks good. I'm gonna switch some of the connections. So pink is now gonna go disconnecting both of them. So you'll see some weirdness on the oscilloscope right now. I'm going to connect this guy here. Okay, and then I'm gonna connect this over to one of the other lines to the left of it. Um, I think I just pulled something out. Let me make sure it comes back in. Oh, and can you plug that into green? Okay, all right. So I'll go through the sequence again. I'm not sure why it's looking noisier, but those spikes look like they're indicative of something else. Yeah, it looks fine here. Yeah, that looks good. I think I was just um, not sure what, exactly what those other spikes were, but I don't think that they were, yeah. Uh, I don't think they had anything to do with disconnects. I think it would have been a lot sharper of a, of a, of a, of a, of a signal. And note that we also did testing with single shot to ensure that we ever saw any crossings, which is not available on this particular mode. But uh, we also made sure that when we did all of this, the single shot trigger on the middle to see if the line actually went down past the middle. And yeah, that's pretty much the slip ring in action and it seems to be working pretty well.